Hey everyone, Xiaomix here. Sonic the Hedgehog is a series with a large variety of colorful and unique characters. Ever since the original Sonic the Hedgehog, we've been introduced to new characters in almost every game. It's one of the series' strongest points in my book. The vibrant personalities and the iconic abilities of each character always spiced up the gameplay and story for each game. And one of my favorite games in the entire franchise, Sonic Heroes, always seemed like the culmination of every character up until that point. It was the Smash Ultimate of the Sonic series. Almost everyone up until that point was there. Even beyond Sonic Heroes, we were continued to be introduced to new characters. Sonic Rush introduced us to Blaze the Cat, one of my favorite characters in the entire series. 06 was Silver the Hedgehog's debut, who's honestly such an underrated and possibly even one of the most unappreciated characters ever. Sonic Unleashed had Chip, who is a really great comic relief character and played a huge part in that game's tearjerker ending. Colors introduced Wisps in a game that tried to have a more self-contained and simple story. Lost World, uh, we don't talk about these guys. And finally, Sonic Forces was Infinite's inauguration into the series. But lately, there's been a pretty big problem with Sonic's friends. In the majority of games to come out in the 2010s, Sonic's friends have become mere background characters, being stripped of almost all personality. On top of this, most serve little to no purpose to the actual story. They just seem to be there for the ride. Overall, their personalities have been boiled down to one simple core trait. This issue became especially apparent in Sonic Generations. Because this game was essentially just a huge love letter to the series, the story is basically non-existent. Can't have a bad story if you don't have a story, am I right? Tall Skinny Sonic teams up with Short Pudgy Sonic to defeat a monster jumbling up space and time. It has players run through the most iconic levels of almost every mainline Sonic game as both iterations of Sonic. It's basically a best of album, but for Sonic games. And very interestingly, we run into a ton if not the majority of side characters appearing throughout the entire series' long history. It's the ultimate fan service, but the amount of interaction from each character is extremely minuscule, some only having a line or two of dialogue for the whole game. To be fair, I don't want to bash this game for not giving each of the 20 plus characters an entire story arc, but I still think it's worth pointing out how basically meaningless these characters are to the overall plot. Besides Tails to an extent, they serve no purpose to progressing the story. They're just there, in the background. But hey, it's fine. It's very obvious this game was just lighthearted fun, celebrating the entire series' rich backlog of characters and sceneries in a very abridged way. But at least we can count on the next games to give our favorites time to shine, right? Okay, so I don't really want to go too deep into Sonic Lost World, as it doesn't feature many of the side characters besides Tails in major roles. I also don't want to dive too deep into Sonic Boom's characters, yet. That might be an entirely separate topic for a future video. So let's jump forward to Sonic Forces, the preceding game after generations to share the same mainline gameplay style and story. This is a game that also features a large amount of the cast of side characters. But unlike Sonic Generations, this isn't just a light-hearted game including a ton of characters as a salute to their contribution to the series. Oh no, this game is actually meant to take itself seriously and have a more grounded story. Sonic Forces has a ton of characters on both the hero and villain side, and the majority somehow manage to be almost pointless to the story. But more annoyingly, their personalities are almost cheap impersonations of what they used to be. For this video, I just want to focus on the hero characters, but I promise you, I'll be going over the villain characters in an entirely separate video in the near future. Let's go over most of the main cast of the heroes and see how their personalities compare to that of the previous games. Let's talk about Tails first. He's Sonic's number one loyal sidekick and plays a pretty major role in almost every game. Being introduced in Sonic 2, he was Sonic's right-hand man. And from every game on, he goes from a disciple whose greatest weakness was relying too much on Sonic, to a completely independent hero who saves an entire city by himself. He also happens to be a prodigy engineer, creating countless useful gadgets that help tremendously in each journey. So how does he compare now? Well, he's kind of reverted to being an overly dependent nuisance to Sonic. He's been shown on multiple occasions of being completely incapable of defending himself in a lot of the more recent games. 
His main personality trait is just that he's a huge nerd that can only rely on his gadgets to do anything useful. NERD! He's also kind of an annoying, naggy goody two-shoes. Knuckles the Echidna, guardian of the Master Emerald and the last remaining member of the ancient Echidna tribe. First appearing in Sonic 3, he's depicted as being very hot-headed and gullible, falling for Eggman's scheme of going after Sonic for trying to steal the Master Emerald. Easily deceived? Yes. Stupid? I wouldn't say so. But in Sonic Boom, he's depicted as a moronic meathead. Reduced to comic relief, it was a huge blow to Knuckles fans. But this was a spin-off game and his personality isn't exactly like this in Sonic Forces. I feel like they wanted to make up for this by making him the strategist. It isn't the most insulting role, but I always viewed Knuckles as someone who doesn't entirely think things through before acting. But the biggest issue is the lack of, you know, being the guardian of the Master Emerald. Does that thing even exist anymore? Knuckles is out here doing all of these crazy shenanigans in a lot of the newer game. So who's guarding the Master Emerald? Amy, Sonic's number one supporter, first debuted in Sonic CD. She was a young girl infatuated with Sonic for his righteous and heroic deeds. In Sonic Adventure 1, she's shown as a compassionate and strong person willing to help others less fortunate than her, constantly putting herself directly in front of danger. She also plays a huge role in Sonic Adventure 2 in helping Shadow realize his true role in saving the world. Looking at Amy in more recent games, she's basically just an over-clingy nuisance who isn't given any spotlight apart from Sonic Boom. She's been shown to be more than capable of not only defending herself, but going out of her way to defend others. Unfortunately, we just don't get any of that in the newer games. She's been reduced to Sonic's number one cheerleader. Big the Cat probably one of the most complex characters in the entire series, needing at least an IQ of 200 to comprehend his story in Sonic Adventure 1. He's an extremely clumsy and oblivious character that would always somehow get himself stuck in situations way bigger than he realized. Now he's kind of just the fat meme man. Shadow the Hedgehog, one of the most misunderstood characters, first appeared in Sonic Adventure 2 as a rival and counterpart to Sonic. His character is extremely well written within this game, as he starts off as a misguided villain seeking revenge, but then later realizing from the help of our hero characters that his true goals lie within saving the world. I could talk about Shadow and his incredible character depth for hours, but for now we'll just leave it at this. Shadow's character has been so misrepresented in almost every game outside of SA2, Heroes, and 06. Now he's this incredible edgelord that completely contradicts his character revelations from the games I just mentioned. Sonic Team loves portraying him as what seems to be almost like a parody of what he's supposed to be. I'm pretty sure they just told the writers to make him as close to Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z as possible, because now he's this cold-hearted bully character that just acts disinterested in everything. Sonic Adventure 2's counterpart to Knuckles, Rouge the Bat, was a sneaky double agent working for the government who also had an obsession for treasure. She's greedy and goes after what she wants. She's also extremely deceptive and totally plays a ton of the characters into doing exactly what she wants. Now she's a lot less selfish and is shown to have much more compassion. It's honestly decent character growth, but definitely removed a really interesting dynamic between the characters. She doesn't play a huge role in any of the newer games, but when she does, her only personality trait is that she's a flirty girl. Cream the Rabbit, a very young and innocent character who had a strong bond with Chow, first appeared in Sonic Advance 2. She's honestly always been a pretty insignificant character, even back then. But what is shown of her shows that she looks up to the rest of the cast as role models. It really just helps amplify the strong personalities of each of the characters as she views them as strong and extremely capable. So how does this compare to the newer games? Team Chaotix, consisting of Vector, Espio, and Charmy, had some of my favorite character dynamics in Sonic Heroes. They're a detective agency barely scraping by, taking on any commission they come across. They end up being duped by their client, who turns out to be Metal Sonic, and basically find themselves in a bunch of comedic shenanigans. These guys appear in both generations and forces, but are probably some of the most underused characters in both games. I truthfully barely have anything to say about them because they literally do nothing. The dynamic of the trio is basically non-existent, as they don't ever interact with each other. 
They aren't even portrayed as being business dark detectives either, which was one of my favorite setups to their story. Blaze and Silver, characters from an alternate timeline and dimension, the former debuting in Sonic Rush, the latter debuting in Sonic 06. They have a strong bond with each other and a huge determination to save their reality from impending doom. Being desperate for any hope of saving their world, they're deceived by the main villain of the story into traveling to the past to eliminate the supposed cause of the catastrophe. Throughout the story, they walk the morally gray area of killing another person in order to save their world from catastrophe. At the end of the game, they return to their dimension and face off against the monster who wreaked havoc on their world. This monster is sealed inside of Blaze, who ultimately sacrifices herself to save the entire world. Flash forward to Sonic Generations. Yeah, both characters are here for some reason. I can see why Silver would be there, and I can maybe see Blaze being there because of the whole space-time jumble, but it's pretty unclear. But then in Sonic Forces, Silver is present, but Blaze is nowhere to be seen. So where is she during Forces? Why is Silver there when he isn't even from that timeline? I can possibly see him returning every once in a while to help out, but where's Blaze then? A possible theory is that she gets sent to the Soul Dimension after disappearing at the end of 06, which is the alternate dimension Blaze comes from in Sonic Rush. This would explain how Sonic encounters Blaze there. But how does Sonic not recognize Blaze in either game? Also, Sonic Rush came out before Sonic 06, so what's the deal with that? I think it's likely Sonic Rush takes place after 06, after all both games were in development at the same time, and it probably wasn't really communicated how Blaze would be handled for each game. And Sonic not knowing about Blaze in both 06 and Rush could maybe be explained by his memory being erased due to the reset timeline at the end of 06 after defeating Solaris. Either way, it's never clearly explained and just makes her inclusion in any game after seem like fan service. But what's so annoying is the fact that both Silver and Blaze apparently go so out of their way to travel to another timeline and dimension to help out, but barely get any screen time. Overall, it further proves my point that most characters seem to just be there for the ride. Sonic has a lot of friends, and they come into play pretty frequently. They used to have such vibrant personalities, and the games loved to give everyone sufficient spotlight. Over the years, the spotlight has diminished to the point where our once colorful side characters have been reduced to shallow background characters with extremely simplified personalities. I think Sonic Team's best bet is to not try and include every side character in a single game, and focus on a smaller to medium sized group so everyone gets a fair shot of being relevant to the story and get the attention they deserve. Hopefully one day we can once again see our favorite characters get adequate screen time and proper treatment to their personalities. Hey guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you like what you saw, leave a like and subscribe for more content similar to this. I try to upload at least one video every week. Let me know in the comments below the character you think got the biggest nerf to their personality. Personally, I think it's either Tails or Shadow. My Twitch schedule from now on will be changed to Wednesdays and Sundays, so if you want to see me play some games, feel free to stop by. And finally, if you're a super fan of my content, make sure to join the community discord. Here you can get the latest scoop on my videos and chat with other fans. Links to everything in the description. And as always, I hope everyone has a fantastic day. Peace.